Hey guys, so I've been using Linode for over eight years now for all of the websites that I've hosted. This is after I've used all the big cloud providers that charge a fortune, as well as the shared hosts that never seem to work. Linode is great for things like setting up your own virtual private network. Basically, if it runs on Linux, it's gonna run on Linode. So they give you the ultimate flexibility and freedom to set up your own Linux server uh, to do all kinds of crazy stuff, whatever you, you dream of. So make sure you guys look at the link in the description tab below. You'll get a free $20 credit if you sign up through that link. There's payment plans as low as $5 a month to get started today. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about the top 10 tech ideas to start a business like right now in 2019. Um, and this is a list that I'm probably going to add more to, but just recently off the top of my head, like in the last month, I'm like in 2019, this is kind of some ideas that I think that need to be capitalized on. And also this isn't like all my ideas because I have a couple of ideas and um, a buddy just suggested an idea recently, but these are ideas that I wouldn't actually give to you guys just because I want to see whether or not I would actually explore it myself. But like the point is though, you always want to keep your, your eyes open to the news around you, the way people are reacting, the way society reacts to certain things. Um, in many cases, when people flock to something, you probably want to avoid it. All right, guys, so number 10 on this list is going to be a essentially a glass door for programmers. So basically a coding job search that's better than Dice.com, that's better than Glassdoor, that's better than ZipRecruiter and all these other things. Like there should be a, a tool focused just for software developers. And um, we usually go to Glassdoor and figure out what type of coding interview styles different companies have. But uh, the, that type of information should be like in one particular place as far as whether a company has like a hard line on whether or not they need a, a, a degree, um, if they accept visas, all this different stuff. So like there should be a website that is just for coders that is just giving information about, um, and it should also list all the, the job openings for all the individual companies. And you just have to start with the big ones, right? Microsoft, Google, go with those guys first, then start working your way down to the smaller tech companies. Uh, eventually you could grow that into like an entire like tech kind of lookup thing, uh, but like an Indeed doc or a LinkedIn for tech. But anyway, there's definitely a market there to try to save some time for the typical coder to figure out, hey, do I want to work for this company or not? All right, guys, so number nine on this list is going to go to local contractors only. I know that this stuff has been done to death with Angie's list. Now you have HomeAdvisor. I believe eBay owns HomeAdvisor, but I'll tell you, I hate the site. It sucks. This site actually, just like with Grubhub buying up domains and such, this company does the same thing. They'll advertise for all kinds of different local contractors. Um, and in some cases, other times they're like companies out of like, if I'm in like Northern Virginia, they'll be like trunk contracting companies out of like Virginia beach for roofing. Um, there were a few companies when I was trying to get a roof repaired where I live right now, where I was calling these different numbers and it was going to home advisor and home advisor is basically trying to pick off uh, and then get you in contact with uh, different roofing companies. And at some point they did, but I was getting like spam with phone calls, emails, home advisor was calling me all the time. Um, the whole process sucked. Right. And then Angie's list, right. That, that place is a little bit better, but it's by uh, membership only. So I, I actually, you know, you have to sign up and then the information there is limited, but I, I suppose what I'm looking for here is that, there should literally be a reliable local contractors only. And even if it's going to be like retail or just local business, but I simply want just a local business lookup and not something like in Google maps where you have like doctors that are being listed out of their homes. Google maps is a mess when it comes to registering your business. So there are businesses that don't exist all the time. Um, it's just, it's a real mess in, in the way that that's handled. So like, I just simply want, a reliable business directory of local contractors because that's what I ended up using for my roof. And honestly, it was about half the price of this company that Home Advisor recommended, and they did a pretty phenomenal job. All right, guys, so the next one is going to be AI hype. Anything AI is like killing it, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and no, you don't even have to have a PhD. Uh, a lot of this stuff is literally being run through TensorFlow algorithms. Like this stuff is already there for you. The challenge is actually analyzing and mapping your data. And that's always the challenge with any sort of business. So there are a lot of shady motherfuckers in this industry right here as far as, as, far as artificial intelligence. They'll tell you, hey, we'll be able to make sense of all your data and stuff. But really, like, like I said, the complexities are always in analyzing that data. There is no general intelligence machine that's just going to figure your stuff out. It's going to have to be a programmer and analyst that are going to sift through your data, 
plot it all out and run it through these algorithms that have existed for a long time using things like TensorFlow and Python. So any sort of company that you want to build up, if you want to, if you decide that, okay, I'm going to have image manipulation or image recognition or whatever, you could focus on one micro niche of machine learning, but let's call it machine learning, artificial intelligence. Well, let's call it machine learning really because it's not general intelligence, but the, the fact of the matter is you can, all that technology exists for any sort of business startup to find a small niche within anything that machine learning does well. And there's a lot of things that, you know, when we have very defined rules in place, which is unlike nature, um, we can actually use computers to make really, really good sense of the data. So that stuff does exist. That's called machine learning in my book. Uh, but anybody can jump into that market and everybody is, and there's just some really hyped up garbage tools out there. All right, guys, so the next one is going to be storage backup. One of the biggest problems that we have right now is the fact that um, companies that are supposed to store your data and have it safe and everything, they're getting their information hacked and breached and um, and they get locked out of their own data through this this uh, ransomware. So like this is a really tough subject because what i'm talking about with this business is simply that not a backup business so i you know i have production servers and you back those things up for a period of time uh, in many cases people aren't backing their stuff up for more than 30 days but even if you do six months if you're doing this automatic um you know every time like normally you don't want to overwrite your data when you're doing backups either you want to have actual individual backups and uh, for my production accounts they're actually backed up every single day but i'm not going to say for how long but um, there's also additional safeguards you should take to then pull that information off the server and then store it somewhere securely. But the, what about like um, our most sensitive data, right? Like the, the photos and everything that we have, um, you know, Facebook got breached. You know how many people actually use Facebook for their images and hopefully Facebook backs their stuff up. But so many people trust the cloud. And we just saw the other day that in a cloud provider that Intuit TurboTax uses for financial and payroll information um, also got breached and their backups were on the same network as the um, as the ransomware attack uh, that you know the, uh, so servers were affected under the same network and stuff so um, nobody could access all their payroll information that stuff is like critically important um, some of this they say you know black hat um, you know internet crimes and such like uh, really just just stealing data and and ransomware attacks and stuff like that I think it costs uh, the industry about five trillion to try to prevent, you know, basically to pay for the best in cybersecurity to prevent this type of shit from happening. Um, so anyway, my idea is that you do a storage backup, but in a physical location. So basically you're a physical shop uh, that is taking in people's information and or like even if it's just, okay, I'm going to upload this information. You're literally putting physical copies, giving these people access, uh, whether it's through uh, you know, webcam through some sort of an appointment, like, okay, I want to see a physical copy of my data. I want, you know, a copy of it sent to me for some sort of price. Um, there's money that could be made there. So if anybody wanted to safeguard photos that they wanted to have a permanent record of, um, and this also goes for anybody that's like trying to build a time capsule type thing. I don't know if it exists, but um, in this kind of case, there should be like some sort of time capsule on it as well. Um, you also have to allow your family and relatives to be able to access some of your personal photos and such where you would want them to see it in the event of your death or something like that. Um, so a lot of this stuff isn't really figured out in the digital world and it needs to be. All right, guys. So the next one on this list is going to be like anything YouTube related. There's so many different people now that are trying to get into YouTube and other social media to think everybody always thinks it's easy too. I love that shit. Like when everybody's like, Oh, it's so easy to try to get a following and social media. Um, like people always overlook that until they go to do it. But besides that, like there's all kinds of tools that actual social media people that are trying to get in uh, and do this sort of thing. They're always looking for new tools in order to make their lives easier, whether it's automatic thumbnail makers, title makers, keyword search, like any of that stuff. You could have media kit makers. Um, if you guys don't know what a media kit is, you need to just like Google that. But um, there's also things like data tables, um, something like D3, a JavaScript project. Uh, is something that like not a lot of programmers really know how to, to do, but if you're a good programmer in JavaScript and you can make sense of a lot of these different tables uh, and you can honestly use these examples to, to then take customers' data and build all kinds of charts, big time money in charts and data uh, plotting 
just you know um any any sort of thing that involves that sort of stuff like if you can uh, dumb it down make it easier uh and just like f- focus on a micro niche like there's certain uh chart documents that are pretty popular like uh, i think chart js is really popular and it's only got like six different charts that are available d3 has a ton more but there's really no documentation uh, and a lot of this stuff, it's just example code from really good developers. You got to try to figure out what they did, but reverse engineering that and then turning it into a commercialized product is something that not a lot of companies are doing. Uh, and if they are, they're not doing it well. All right, guys. So the next one is going to be a vacation planner. Where are the better vacation planners? Something that I don't have to do a bunch of legwork and research to figure out different four star hotels, three star hotels, two star hotels, like whatever different locations around the country. Why can't there be a profile of my information and this website acts as a travel agent where essentially it is constantly perusing the internet and different bundles and packages, trying to find great prices and simply giving me suggestions, just being like, oh, you could go here or there or like places I would never even think to even look really. But if like uh, these these lists from like US news and stuff of like the cheapest travel destinations, like dude, those lists suck. Like, I mean, and then they'll connect you over to like Expedia or something like that. And you have to do all this research and look and then find out it's like, you know, six or 7,000 more than like what you thought it was going to be. But anyway, the point is like there are tools to easily automate that process uh, and just simply communicate with all these different companies, find out what these deals are and just simply give me some good results and a list format of different ideas that I could do and already have it all scoped out as far as, you know, how many kids you got, whether, you need, whether or not you need a dog friendly hotel whether or not you have to have a pool, you know, all this other stuff. Like there's just no tools like that. And, um, the technology exists to do it. All right, guys. So the, the next one on this list is going to be a, a exclude paywall search. So basically anything medium, you got to go. I'm not signing up to, to read your shit from like user generated stuff. Medium sucks, dude. Like, I mean, the fact that they lock all this stuff behind a paywall now, like people should have been blogging on their own platforms all along. But anyway, the point is, is that anything that's locked behind a paywall, like these medium sites, like when I'm on my mobile phone or even Washington Post, New York Times, like they all want me to pay money and I'm not going to pay them any money. So I'd rather just because I don't even enjoy reading the news for the most part anyway. And like, I'd rather just kind of like, you know, peek in here and there. But like, I don't need to pay anybody four ninety nine for the news right now. Their product isn't good enough, in my opinion. It's not something I'm interested in. So. That said, I don't want Google giving me those results and I have no way of excluding it. So there should there should be an easy way of on your mobile phone, because I don't even think it's possible on Google search to exclude certain websites from your search result. And if you can, I don't want to have to go to advanced search to do it. I want to be able to do it, you know, by default. Like I don't want, you know, New York Times coming back and all this Washington Post or anything locked behind a paywall. Um, This can also be said for anything, like I said, with medium or any other content that is locked behind like, okay, we'll give you a little tidbit and then you have to give your credit card information for this or that. So really just like a completely free search. Everything has to be completely freely accessible without accounts and without paying. If that existed, I would, I would be checking it out. All right. So number three, and maybe this is wishful thinking, the entire online educational platform completely sucks the chats uh the way like i used to have to use blackboard because i took most of my college college courses online blackboard is one of the worst pieces of software I, i'm pretty sure anybody who's ever taken online courses can can probably agree with that right it kind of brings everything that was ugly from the late 90s early 2000s into the web portal of of education other website platforms have done a better job like udemy um, of allowing you to build quizzes and things like that. I actually built one of my own um, internal websites with like its own quiz maker and stuff. Um, and that took a lot of code, a lot of time. And th- the bottom line is that if there was a better uh, educational portal, I think that um, one of the most successful things the internet has done is actually allowed people to, to show what they know. So you can go to YouTube and all kinds of people just show them what they know as far as how to fix boats, like motors, like almost anything in your house. I've used it a million times. People watch me to learn how to code and stuff or or even just talk about code. I just think the educational platforms need a little bit of work. All right. So number two on this list is going to go to privacy, anything, anything that people are talking a ton about and you can just search it on the news and there's going to be, as you can see, 1.4 billion results on privacy when we search that just in news. 
So just recently, there's always some sort of scandal with privacy going on. Um, there's always some sort of talk, right? You could probably build an entire website just around the talk of privacy. Uh, if you wanted to, you're not going to make a ton uh, and you're anything that's easily copied is not not going to make you very much. And you're going to have to do a lot of work to try to differentiate yourself. But the point is, though, what kind of tools can you build for privacy? Are there tools that can strip out metadata from photos? Um, you know, do you have to build a new tool for every single type of device? I don't personally know, but I know that, like, if there was a tool that safely removed any sort of metadata from any sort of um you know digital medium that we use like whether it's photos or um video or something like that or maybe to scramble uh confuse certain face facial recognition software if something like that exists and we could actually like voluntarily put our face into some software that literally just scrambles all of this information uh that could be being collected through cctv snapchat this new face app all kinds of shit, right so it's kind of scary because people can associate faces with voices use things like um python uh deep fakes in order to to then replicate video you have people that um you know i mean just it, it's pretty creepy what, what what can happen so privacy as we move forward with this day and age uh, with obviously every single, it seems like every single tech company acting unethical uh, as just the status quo and we allow this shit to go on. But like, it, I mean, maybe just calling out some of these assholes. And I, I mean, a lot of the, the social or the mainstream news does that, but um, obviously tools need to be built in order to circumvent this stuff and things like ad blocker exist for those types of reasons. So whether you're going to build a Chrome plugin or something like that, or you're going to build an entirely, um, you know, separate product, like there, the sky's the limit when it comes to privacy. All right, guys. So number one on this list is going to go to WebGL anything. WebGL, uh, along with WebAssembly, possibly, but WebAssembly is is somewhat optional at this point. WebGL is not being utilized enough in this day and age. Our browsers are getting better and better. It supports all the way back to IE uh, 11 and well, supposedly, but besides that, even uh, hopefully IE will die soon completely. But uh, as far as like edge, it does work on that. It works on Chrome, Mozilla it works on your phone. This stuff, it gives you the ability um, to change the way that we do business um, really like on the web. Um, and so you can load 3d models. You could have uh, actual interactive stuff like uh, like I'm dragging this model around. So, I mean, the, the thing is, how can we change the medium of the web? We used to be so fascinated with simple overlays and like light boxes with jQuery. And now look what we have at our disposal. But why aren't we integrating this into our everyday existence? Like, why isn't our vacation booking a little bit more interesting and fun like this? I would much rather book a vacation on a website that's truly built out like this and I can click on it and interact with it. And it tells me certain things that I need to know. Like it's just going to be more visual. You don't have to have language barrier problems because it's much more visual and pre presentation. Um, this medium is not being uh, applied enough. I mean, like we also have the ability to do virtual reality inside the browser. And with WebAssembly, it's going to speed all that stuff up, but you're still going to use WebGL. So the, the, the more you can get on board with some of these WebGL libraries, and really there's probably two that I should mention without having to make an entire list on this, uh, which I plan to, but you have Babylon JS, and then you have 3JS. 3JS here is what we're looking at right now. Uh, and then Babylon is another kind of more full featured. You don't have to install as many plugins. But it has examples of like actual shooters and stuff and all this stuff is available. The thing that I'm basically saying is that the medium is not being applied towards everyday business. It's, it's still like gaming and stuff. So it's like we don't have to be so one tracked mind like this thing's actually playing with other players and stuff, which I really don't want to do. I really don't want to do, but it just shows you the capabilities that are available. I mean, this is crazy. I'm playing inside my browser against other people. And I'm getting out of it. So the main point is that you don't have to create a game engine in order to bring this medium to everyday existence. What type of websites could be interrupted, could be completely revolutionized through some basic 3D models, manipulations? Uh, I think a lot. 